I'm not going to say it another time. Avengers. <laughs> well, you just said it another time. So I'm going to say it another time. <laughs> another time. Get roasted okay. after this. You what was the initiative that they had? <laughs> <laughs> This is Unposit, a podcast by a family of geeks. <laughs> I'm Lady Disdain, and I'm 43 years old. I am the sauce underscore, and I am 11 teen. <laughs> underscore the data bites. Faulty one. I am Furious Girl, and I am nine. Welcome to the Unposit podcast, where we are podcasting about... Everything! Uh, Captain movies America. Captain America. The yeah. Winter Soldier. Yay! No. <laughs> Captain America, the Winter Soldier is our topic today. Yay. Today is something something in 2018. This came out in April 4th of 2014. Imagine he doesn't have his magic. Done. It's right there. Oh, come Aww. on. Today's the 25th, isn't it? Of the... Of February. February. Wait a February. Yeah. Hmm. So we're just a little over a month shy of a four-year anniversary for the Winter Soldier. Four years. Wow. That's a college degree. That's high school, kids. <laughs> Think about it. No. A computer four years ago wouldn't work for us today. Actually, I can I can attest that one would, just not very well, because I have one of those at my my job. And I'm like, oh, it's we so also uh, have it's so your, sad. We also have your computer, which has been around for like longer than you have. Well, that's a no. That's an 11 year old Mac. That just no. refuses to die. Longer than you have. <laughs> longer than you have. Let's let's be clear about who is longer than. <laughs> longer than. Not longer than so, you because he's thirty two. <laughs> we are in a little bit different location. Uh, we are in the midst of a major wind storm. <laughs> yes. So we have come down to the bunker, the geek bunker, if you will. You know, the the thumb that was broken at the beginning of recording these has moved on to the foot, foot surgery that has now plates and crutches needed. Which is, the mother. I suppose we could go around, uh, the one who has had foot surgery is me, I am Lady Disdain, 43 years old, hobbling around on crutches, good times. Good times. Okay. I can do some good times. Okay, so I am the sauce underscore, underscore dad, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to point out that it is a major windstorm. I uh, was closing the gate to my fence. And uh, it bent the metal. It bent. Oh, it's it Dad's bent. fence. It's Dad's fence. It bent Dad the metal. Uh, on the on the, the latch, it bent the metal. Like, like it said, was wedged in between the post and the latch that is bolted on there. It was. If someone was coming there, we would be at the hospital doing our podcast because someone would have gotten a concussion. It, it was the Dad abides fence, not the sausage fence. It even broke part. It's of everybody's the post. fence. Who are you? Me. Furious girl underscores underscores. No, you have no underscores. You're furious girl. With, you have a zero, though. Got right. a zero. Come on. Furious girl with a zero. How old are you? 97. Okay. <laughs> I am underscore the data bites. 40 oh, something. 41. Wait, sure. we're older than our parents? <laughs> Oh, I sure yeah. don't act like it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, because this is the Unpaused Podcast, and we just had to pause, and now we've unpaused it. Of course we have. No puns. That will be our post-podcast, like after match. Well. Do a little bit of movie specs on this one. It came out April 4th, 2014. We're talking about that. Directed by the Russo brothers, Joe and Tony, buddies mine. What else? <laughs> Anthony Russo. They yet. did a bunch of television, right? I had no idea that they were television directors. I don't watch television, really. They're community. They directed community, things like that, uh, together. And they worked really well. I think that was a great move as a business because what these movies are are big, giant TV specials with movie budgets. They have to kind of follow each other. And having a television background really help the story because we're going to talk about that when we get into some favorite scenes this set up a few other movies just with some one or two words here and there mm -hmm. it was very well done uh starring chris evans as captain america scarlett johansson as black oh. widow i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> so don't ask questions sebastian stan is 
Bucky. Uh, kids are going kind of crazy on this one. Anthony Mackie is introduced as, as Falcon. Bucky mm-hmm. Barnes returns into this one. Sebastian Stan. It was, the, I remember the, the marketing campaign. People were like, oh, we don't want to reveal who the Winter Soldier is. I'm like, it's Sebastian Stan's in the credits. He's in the first one. You really, it's not really uh-huh. a surprise to the audience, but we're going on the journey of the surprise to cap on this one. There's a bunch of other characters that were introduced. Um, the original crossbow. You had a question who was? Alexander we're getting Pierce. getting to that. Well, you're <laughs> writing the stars right now. Who? Alexander Pierce. Yes, by the great Robert Redford. Nice. Who uh, looks very short. You know, he's, so maybe he osteoporosis has happened. I'm not sure. He is 195 years old. I never thought he was that tall anyway. Well, yeah, he probably wasn't ever really that tall. Like, you know, Tom Cruise is, you know, four foot one, something like that. Could be in that similar Shorter vein. Than Georgia. But he knocked this out of the park. <laughs> These directors took a famed good guy and made him a cold blooded murderer. And yep. you were like, Huh, I kind of see his point of view right. at the end. You're like, yeah. wow. So, th- you know, this movie is just, it's, uh, you know, spoilers ahead. This is my favorite of the MCU movies, and we have seen Black Panther. This is my favorite still. Yes. Even above Thor Ragnarok. What? That's who's in it. Let's go on to some superpowers, kiddos. Happy face. I didn't write any superpowers because he's freaking Captain America. He doesn't need a superpower now. Happy face. You know who you're not? You're not Dr. Evil, so watch your frickins. Friggin'! What are you saying happy face for? What's the happy face? Because he's just Captain America, right? What's the suit? Let's talk about the superpowers. I think he was better trained. Right. Don't you think he kind of fought better than, than in the first movie, in the first Captain America movie? Okay, uh, I would like to point out something. In the Winter Soldier, the Winter Soldier has a metal arm. Right. But you'll also notice that every other part of his body is as strong as Steve. That's because in the first movie, Bucky was dosed with Red Skull's blood. Right, right. He was experimented on by Dr. Zola. A lot of those captives were. And that's where Steve Rogers found him, was strapped to that uh, gurney. Mm Mm-hmm. And there was a bunch of needles and stuff going. That was supposed to intimate that Bucky Barnes was coming back as a Winter Soldier. So we can see where this is why we're getting ties and everything. I made a point watching this again last night. You don't need to watch any of the other Marvel movies, really. Watch this movie, and it's engaging. It goes over the history of everything really well. Without sounding repetitive, you could jump into the MCU movie on this movie on a high note without even having seen the Avengers and kind of like know what you're doing and enjoy the movie in my opinion. But moving on from superpowers because Furious Girl has a happy face for her superpowers and I'm looking at her notes. She actually does have a happy face for her superpowers. <laughs> well done. <laughs> we're just a blank face. So we're gonna, yeah, he's a super soldier. When we get to favorite scenes, we're going to talk about Super Soldier versus Super Soldier. We're going on to weaknesses, some of the weaknesses of this particular hero. I don't know. He's Captain America. I don't... I he can't. freezes like that. He freezes like Black Panther. Once he sees his buddy that has been dead for nearly a hundred years. Well, no. Okay. Seventy years. Well, if you round up, if you round up by decade, maybe then yes. No, but they they kind of right. hit the nail on the head. That's that's what makes him freeze. He does freeze like Black Black Panther, uh, just not for the same reason. I know. Or not the same person, but right. He he does freeze. So yes. I put down something that uh, one of his weaknesses and vulnerabilities is without war, he doesn't know who he is. Mm. That's a great setup into his dialogue with uh, Agent Hill in Avengers Age of, Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. And talk about war and everything. It's like, yeah, do you really need this war? But that was a deleted scene in Age of Ultron. Right. What the kids were getting at, though, was that the moment he like sees, he recognizes Bucky. He sees the, the Winter Soldier, the man he's been fighting and the man he's been chasing is his old friend. I mean, he does. He freezes. He sh- I mean, because think about that. Basically, all of the uh, Hydra guys, the special forces team come in. They're able to subdue him when... He just knocked all those same guys out in, the, in an elevator, but he's he's lost all his momentum because he sees Bucky and he's just you see he's just kind of sitting there just dazed while they're they're handcuffing him. Um, so yeah, he he loses it right there because he's just like, wow, I can't believe I just saw my friend and what is going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you think about it, that elevator scene, which again we'll talk about more in detail, sets up this one. But as far as his weakness needs war, I also put he's mortal. He could have easily died. Got shot several times. 
uh, the Winter Soldier, Bucky, at the very end, could have just killed him. So he is mortal. He is not a Hulk, or he's not completely immortal. We don't know if the Vision is immortal. We don't know if any of these other ones really are immortal or not. But that's what I put down on that one. I'm going to have you talk to me about some of the villains, and we're going to talk about the Winter Soldier. Un- pause it. No, no puns. No. <laughs> no puns intended. So the Winter Soldier is the uh, title character of this movie, Captain mm-hmm. America, the Winter Soldier. Does anybody know where that term comes from, Sauce? Uh, I don't know where it comes from, but I know how Bucky got the name. Okay, tell me. So, they found him in a bunch of ice, gave him a metal arm, and he kills people. <laughs> you could, could kind of maybe go there, you and, know? I, I don't know. And he's a soldier! A super soldier, just like Cap. And they found him in winter! Could it be that, I mean, I, I kind of, you know, you could make that an instant correlation, be like, oh, he fell in the snow, and then, you know, but it seems also like they use it for specific times in history, they bring him out of ice. Um, they, they freeze him, for one thing. They do freeze him to keep him to work. Yeah, they, they have this cryogenic uh, capabilities in the 1940s. A, right, so. that could be a time for winter also. But you could also look at it saying, well, in history's most uproarious times, they're bringing him out to incur a change, a shift in direction. And so, yeah, Hydra, we find out, you know... This could be like just a spoiler ding throughout the background well, of the entire it's, it's thing. it's been out for four years. Yeah, so I'm true. okay with that. Yeah. Hydra's been controlling him and using him uh, to assassinate things, to rile things up, uh, start wars, things like that. But the term comes from like a Thomas Paine quote talking about the summertime soldiers, the ones that deserted in Valley Forge who were under the General George Washington at the time during the Revolutionary War for the United States, where they deserted. So they were only summertime soldiers. These are the winter soldiers. They fight through the hardship of winter. They are there to do what they need to do until the job is done. Mm -hmm. And that's where the winter soldier is. He is there to do the job. Uh, He has been brainwashed and controlled into a killing machine, which makes him, in my opinion, on my personal list, the top first ultimate MCU villain. Same. Yeah, me and you are on the same page on that one. Well, uh, what about Loki? Loki is on there too. Loki you know, number two. That's yours, okay, right? I will. I do have a question since right. we're on the topic of Loki for some reason. Uh, I wonder if Loki, when he had a scepter, well, just the Mind Stone by itself, which is the scepter, could control Bucky. And if I, if and if it, if was, it would need it to. So if the mind stone was controlling Bucky, would the brainwashing actually get rid of the mind stone stuff? I don't know. Good question, though. I think so. Yes, I think that the mind control stuff would override that mind stone stuff. But then you would be just completely a scrambled egg of a brain. I know. Well, and I think. I mean, because we talked about this. I don't. There's our cat's contribution to the podcast. Um, I don't think, I mean, I think Bucky is right up there. He's in my top five for the best villains, but he's definitely the most pitiable, um, you know, character of all in almost in the entire universe, because you talk about somebody who you talked about scrambled eggs. Yeah. They're basically just scrambling his brain every single time. He has no, he has no uh, personality of his own anymore. They wipe him. They bring him out to do a mission. They put him back on ice. He has no life. He is basically just at their right. beck and call. And uh, just the, the, the one scene where they, he says, you know, you need to wipe him again. And he's basically using electrocution on his brain to do that. You're just like, oh, my goodness. So it's, it's pretty it's brutal. Empathetic. But if you think about it, another uh, major villain in cinematic history, he's the Terminator. You know, he's coming at you with no feelings, no remorse. Yeah. A machine. Machine. He's a machine. Basically, he's got <laughs> machine arm and things like that. So that's why I put him up there because, and it takes the hero who has his, a little bit more power than he does, maybe, and just like, but done. Like we just mm-hmm. talked about. Freer's girl. What are your thoughts on the villains in this movie? Because there, we have the Winter Soldier, of course. What who do you else think? do we have? Bucky Pierce, the worst villain of all time. What? No. You do not like Alexander Pierce as a nine-year-old furious girl. It did not speak to you whatsoever, did it? He sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's what we're trying to find out. So what about the Hydra? What about the Senator? 
uh, and Sitwell. Crossbones. And Crossbones. What about all those other characters? Do you have any... I, I have thoughts? no idea. Okay, so I... <laughs> Rumlo, Crossbones, is Rumlo this time. He's on the Strike Force. Probably one of the higher security members of... Strike force ness. Well, he's Captain's that. lieutenant. He's hit the second in command of Cap's uh, team. And from the beginning, you kind of get the notion, well, he really admires Cap. Not so much at the end. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, we also see that he's pretty good, but follows orders. We're going to go over here to Lady Disdain and get her full thoughts on Alexander Pierce, Hydra, and the Winter Soldier, Bucky. Uh, well, I already shared what I think about Bucky, so he's very he's a very good um, villain. However, he's a questionable villain. You're just like, he's obviously being controlled. Uh, he's definitely a force, a villainous force, but Alexander Pierce is the handler, and he is smarmy. I mean, he is he, he's ruthless. You know, he, he kills his own, you know, lady who works in his house. He is willing, he kills all the council basically or tries to. Um, so yeah, he's ruthless. He's totally bought into Hydra. He's basically like Red Skull, except in present day and in a three piece suit. So I think he embodies all of the bu- bureaucracy, the ruthlessness. And, and also this, this, uh, I always find, and it never fails every time I watch this movie, there is so much current day application to it where it's like, oh, this algorithm that can predict based on your digital actions what you what you will do in the future, therefore it'll decide if you should live or die. And I'm like... Oh, why uh, does Facebook know that I need some crutches? I know. I'm like, in the word algorithm, for those of us who, like myself, who work in social media, we're like, ah! But, it's that guy that lives down the street, Al Gorbrither. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's a real thing. I, I like this movie on many levels, but one is that it's like, that's not necessarily necessarily an unheard of threat um, oh, and they're right in the middle of it so the fact that you've got alexander pierce who can wield such a threat and is about to put it in action i mean I, it's a really good storyline so he's a really worthy villain i think and a professional talented actor to not phone it in mm-hmm. so, okay so some 200 days ago you mentioned something about the council yeah what about the so council? the council, you know, Romanoff infiltrated the council. I wonder how. Uh, it was and whatnot, set up in the movies. I wonder how. What do you mean it was set up? Talk, talk it to was me. not set up because he said it was set up. Okay, so talk to me about he, she infiltrated the council. You, you wonder how? how that uh, happened? Yeah, I'm wondering, like, because they're probably, like, really high security. Yes. Well, when you were entering the building, it's like, sorry about the traffic. Not even sh- uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. can control the traffic. They just threw it in there, one line. Oh, there must have been like a little stop and they did a little super spy action. They just didn't show it. Although I kind of wished that that actual councilwoman and, and that it hadn't been Natasha Romanoff. That would have been so cool. Like the councilwoman <laughs> contacted her and like brings her in and then Natasha comes in with uh, Fury at the end on the helicopter and the councilwoman is holding there. Yeah, I kind of would have liked that. I would have been, I think that would have been an improvement. She's an old lady. But yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. it's also yeah. taking a really good thing and making it maybe just as good, but in a different way, because it, it really worked well the mm-hmm. way it is, because that actress who plays that councilwoman did do that stunt. <gasps> she did all the stunts in that scene. That's cool. So Yay! It did have a so, old ladies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right, Georgia. That's in a right. way that did happen. But so the council was infiltrated and they kind of just kind of mentioned it in passing. <laughs> So to kind of set you up for, oh, maybe. So when it does happen, you're like, huh. Just like you were thinking there, Sauce. Yeah, cool. So we're going to go on to some favorite scenes because we've been talking about these scenes over and over again. We're going to start off with the Furious Girl and ask her her favorite scenes and go through them. And if we agree, we're going to kind of expand on them at a time. Go ahead. Uh, I have no seats. I have lines. Okay. And I think this is part of Willis's lines. On your left. Yep. And then, um... <laughs> yep. The very first line. And Falcon, um, responds on one of them. Yeah, on my left. Got it. Yeah, on my left. <laughs> okay, so is that all? Well, yeah. We, yeah, this will, you know, we, okay. she'll, she'll chime in again. Go ahead. That's done. Go ahead, Sal. So, uh, I have a lot. One is on your left. Two is when Nick Fury is in his tank SUV. Yeah, Nick Fury Trace. His tank is inactive. Most of it is like, air conditioning is active. <laughs> <laughs> Great line. That's actually fully active. Great line. And uh, 
Alexander Pierce is talking to neighbor. Yeah, yeah, uh, Agent 13. And Cat walks by Agent 13 and just like, and uh, Agent 13 is like, Cat, neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I also have the elevator scene. Mom will do that. We'll talk about that later because it's definitely a perfect scene. We're all going to talk about the elevator scene right now. Let's talk about this elevator scene because we're in a little area that's kind of like an elevator. No, Sauce, you don't get to go first. No, she gets to go first. That's right. She's the one that wants to go and first. And I'm not going. All right. You well, can give us something. Yeah, let's be clear. The elevator scene is spoken of in hushed and reverent tones throughout the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't ever encounter anyone who's seen Winter Soldier who doesn't say, that elevator scene, because you want to see it over and over again. It's epic. It's awesome. To me, it's like the whole movie speed happened in that one little segment because it's like, you know, when you... With twice the amount of plot. Right. You have this entire action sequence that is just perfect and it's happening in the confines of a whatever, 12 by 12 area, which is what the... uh, the Oh, smaller. 12 by 12 is huge. Right. That's just 6 by 6. So... I mean, every moment of that is great because you see Cap get in. He's obviously incredibly troubled. Nick Fury's dead in his mind. He's He knows he's being questioned. He's like, God, everybody's kind of looking at me suspected. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do next. And then... He, one, you know, one by one or like group by group, you start getting all stopping all these floors and just watching Cap go through the mental process of saying, huh. Well, he saw the clues. He saw the sweat. He saw the one guy that with his grip hand. in his sidearm. Yeah, a hand on his taser. So he, taser he's, stick. He's recognizing that, that the entire strike team is slowly getting onto the elevator at different points. He's like. And then, and he's been kind of moved into the center of the elevator. And you do, you just see that moment where he just kind of the aha moment, like, oh, this is what we're going to do. Right. And then you can see in his eyes and then he says what we wanted. It was so satisfying. Before we start, does anybody want to get off? And then he proceeds <laughs> to whoop all of them. He whoops their booties. Like, Literally. Whoops them. He does. It's and then amazing. jumps out of the 30th floor. Wait, wait. But before that. Remember, this isn't this isn't personal. Ah, and then he knocks Rumlow out last, and he goes, "It feels kind of personal." It kind of feels right. personal. Right, it's like personal. Oh, and then he, uh, so, so and then he gets a running, and then uh, he opens the elevator door, sees that uh, people are coming, breaks the right like ropes that uh, let mm-hmm. the elevator go up and down, and then the emergency stop activates. He opens the door again with his bare hands. And, and then what? What did he and do And he next? sees more people coming. And so he closes the elevator door. He jumps off a 30-foot... 30-story. 30 30-story 30 drop uh, and lands. When I die. It hurt. He lands on the shield. Die. He didn't even break a bone. So they, you know, as writing a movie, so as peeling the curtain back, they needed a way for him to survive. Oh, he just lands on the shield. The shield becomes the do-it-all multi-purpose tool of writers... How does he get out of a 30th story elevator that's stuck? Oh, he just jumps out and lands on the shield. Good. Here we go. <laughs> then he takes down a jet with his shield. Not with his shield. Nothing but and a shield his himself. Foot. And he gets more and more powerful. He's starting to realize that he's actually more and more powerful than he really is. He's not being used. He hasn't used his full strength yet. Uh, some favorite scenes that I had was the on your left. That was great. It brought in the Falcon and made him... A sidekick, unfortunately, but a capable sidekick in his own man in his own right. So the MCU version of a sidekick. Well, a vital one too. I mean, yeah. he. I think. Well, anyway, he's he has to at least get one of the one of the helicarriers connected. I mean, he's in, oh, crucial yeah, yeah. to their go-bouts. Yeah. And when I say sidekick, he's not some boy wonder. He is his own man, mm-hmm. fully capable. But he's going to be at the side of Captain America and on Captain America's side, Civil War as well. The elderly Peggy Carter scene. Nah, that was really good. Way to change the whole tone of everything, but like set it up because that was more at the beginning. Uh, Cap has nobody, you know? Yeah. So Peggy was in her mid-90s when this is happening. She's got dementia and he knew her. Mm -hmm. Everyone else that he knew was dead but it's so hard because she you can tell she mentally resets so he has to go through with her repeatedly 
that oh she just discovered he's back so it's never like they have this continuing conversation it's always you know oh yes let me go through this emotional appeal with you again so it's right. a really hard connection right there and the special effects on it that was so Haley good. Atwell in a little bit of special effects dots and then just digitally aged her and it was amazing um, they should have probably aged her teeth too she did have spectacular teeth right there and you know that's Hollywood you can't have bad teeth in Hollywood um, <laughs> but the Fury Chase I am right on the board with the sauce on this one. Yep, I had that down too. Because, not yet, not yet. And it's like, it's going to be really hard to kill Nick Fury. I mean, it it has to be. And obviously they didn't in that scene. I mean, even with the Winter Soldier at the very end of that, he still got away with his little mini lightsaber. But that's what makes makes that scene the best, is because that's our first time we see Winter Soldier. Like, how, how many things have happened in this movie? And that's the first we see of him. That's really good. Okay. And just one shot, and then boom, Nick Fury's done at that point. Okay, I would like to say two things. One, it seriously is a mini lightsaber. Well, yes. Like seriously, I pointed that out first during the movie, and then another thing, I don't understand. He uh, he just cut a hole so quickly into the ground because it's a mini lightsaber. Because it's a movie about somebody who was frozen in ice while flying a giant wing with a guy with a red skull. We don't have to get too particular about any of the science. Sus- suspension of reality. There a little is bit no off. science. Yeah, there is science. Captain America's shield can fly. I really like where uh, Falcon... Uh, Captain America needs my help. I need, don't need another reason than that to get uh, back yeah. into going into war. Because um, Cap's like, no, you got out of this for a reason. He's like, well, you just gave me the reason I need to get back in. Falcon did have some good lines. I, that was good. And then I really like uh, you do see Cap and, and Fury kind of standing off against each other where when Fury is first showing him the helicarriers and Captain says, this isn't freedom, this is fear. Right. And he had some really poignant lines there. Again, getting back to the whole, like, yeah, we, you know, you can't pre-control people, predetermine what they're going to do. That isn't freedom. That's that's you who decides that. And I like what he said about that, too. And again, acknowledging he's like, yeah, we crossed some lines in our day, too, but you can't rule like this. You can't govern like this. And so I really liked that. That scene was poignant to me. It was really good. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip over any of that. That's okay. I thought you were done. I am now. It's for the scene. So we're going to move on to Furious Girl and her thoughts on the Stan Lee cameo. Ten. Yeah. Just ten. What are your thoughts on it? Not just the number. I like, had no idea. Why did remember you like he was it? the old, he was the uh, oh, uh, yeah, security guard? Oh, yeah, I have no idea of the thoughts. You just really liked it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Sauce? The I Stan do Lee like cameo. Stanley it was cameo. one of your favorite scenes. You were yeah, gonna uh, I really like it. So what happened to this? Have we already said this? Well, okay, so Cap got his original Captain America the First Avenger outfit. Yeah, uh, uh, but that was from the museum, and now it's uh, just a naked dummy with the Captain America ship on a stupid rock. Right. And now uh, Stan Lee is like, I am so far. Well, you didn't need to reenact it, but I appreciate your effort. I reenacted it. Yeah, I am so far. I really like that. I am so fired. He, that's one of the most lines he's had. I think he had a few more lines. It was about the same length as the Black Panther one, which was also really good. Way better than any of the John Favreau cameos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Iron yeah. Man 1 and 2. Um, so far, pretty excellent cameo. How about your thoughts on that? I also gave it I, I, a 10 out of 10. It was perfect. It was funny. He was just a normal dude. And just the, I am so fired. Because <laughs> it was just like, yeah, you are fired because the, the thing's gone. It was really funny. I liked Nine it a lot. 9 out of 10. One of the things that they have really thrown into popular culture and movie cinema going is the end credit scenes. Yes, which all theaters should know to leave the the lights down until the end credit scene is done. If it has a Marvel flip on it, leave the lights off. Yes. It's not the very first one, obviously. One of the very, very first ones was... Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? That's right. What, what are you here? What are you still doing here? Go home. That was Again, a breaking scene. the fourth wall, something I love. Right. We're going to talk about the mid and end credit scenes, because this one has a mid and end. Not every single one of them has a mid and end. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has a beginning, intermission, yes, mid, middle end, and then an end scene. So <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have that many on this one. No. So, Ferris Girl, give me an impression of both the mid and end credit scenes, and a little rundown of what you saw in them. 
So the mid credit scene was Bucky staring at things. That was the yeah. end credit scene. That was the very oh, end credit scene. What's the mid oh, one? The mid one is boring news. With Strucker. In boring news. Okay, you were bored by both of them. What about the music on the end credit scene? Scariness. Of you didn't goodness. like the tone of that, did you? Dude, Scary and, creepy and that's where I disagree with you because I think the Winter Soldier theme is perfect. It's totally creepy. It's yeah. It's glaringly kind of psycho. But I think this is also why she likes the Winter Soldier as a villain because his theme is so freaky and scary. It, it really speaks to her. Yeah. And this is just one of those things where we're just trying to figure it out. And she gave the mid credit scenes zeros out of tens. Mid credits are the one where where you meet the twins. Yeah. And uh, end oh. credit two. Okay, okay, I give the mid credit scene one out of ten. I would have to agree with the sauce on this one. I also give the end credit scene three out of ten. I don't agree with the sauce on that Because, uh, I mean, it's Bucky. You couldn't like Bucky. Uh, my credit scene, I'm going to give it probably a three out of ten. I don't think they did. I didn't get excited at all about, well, who are these guys? You know, what, am I getting, you know, I didn't get excited at all about that, about them showing the twins. They barely, they didn't lay a whole lot of groundwork out, but you'd at least get to see the scepter and you're like, what's going on? But uh, I really, so I give a uh, nine out of ten to the end credit scene where you see Bucky back at the Smithsonian. To me, that brought the movie full circle because Steve had walked those steps earlier in the movie looked at that same uh, piece about Bucky and now Bucky himself is looking at it and, and almost in the same getup. He's got a ball cap on and everything. It's the standard. I was about to mention the ball cap. It's the standard Marvel Cinematic Universe Clark Kent Incognito. <laughs> you put on a nondescript baseball cap with no logo on it and nobody, nobody knows, knows who you, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought they did a good job with that because it's like, you know, just as Steve was remembering Bucky, now Bucky is starting to remember Bucky by looking at that. So I, right. really, I liked it. And right down to the music. I thought the music still was like, oh, what you're so good. Yeah, I agree with We've had many discussions about this in our family. Uh, I think Joss Whedon is extremely overrated. And he, well, apparently he's also a philanderer. If that affects your... Yes, it should, but it I don't should. think he's overrated but as a move as a an entertainment maker. I think he is, and I think uh, Justice League proves that, and I think Age of Ultron in his sequelitis proves that it's still not Iron Man two though. That's our like new, <laughs> our new go-to. Low. Well, at least that's not Iron Man two. But uh, that mid credit scene, the only recurring character that we saw in it was the Scepter. That the sauce pointed out. We don't know who Scarlet Witch. We don't know who Quicksilver, unless you've read the comics or whatever. We don't know who Strucker is. You're like, what is going on? It makes all these questions, and sometimes that makes for good things. Like, oh, you end on these questions. This one on a mid credit scene, you want to see, like, that was Thor. <laughs> That was the end credits of Thor. It set up uh, Captain America First Avenger. Oh, let's give that a look or something. Yeah. yeah. So you had Selvig, Nick Fury, Loki, and then this new thing, which was the Tesseract. So you had all this familiarity and one little thing. It's the exact opposite of this one. You had all these questions with one thing. It's like, oh, that was that thing in the last movie. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense for you until you start watching Age of Ultron and you're like, oh, yeah. okay. So I did not like it, and I think it was just poor decisions. Not like it was poorly written or lit or anything. It's just, it was a bad decision. But the end credit scene, the Lady Disdain has eloquently listed all that. We're going to go on to our overall ratings. All right. What is the thing? What, what is it is, huh? Yes. What is yeah. it? What, Willis, what are you trying to say? Are you waiting to give your rating or what? I'm waiting to give my rating what? so I can go home. Yes, but he needs to <laughs> give us... Home. <laughs> he's giving us the, the unit of measure. Uh, okay. He? I Dad am. is. Yeah, not you. Yeah. He's okay. yeah, Mike. struggling to figure out what the John overall rating Jeff, would be. Mike, Dave. Um, but I would think it Don't. is uh, Red Stars. <laughs> ah, Red Stars. Because that is what is on the Winter Soldier's arm. Okay. I almost said Metal Arms, but I'm like, nah. Right, the Red Star on the Metal Arm, we're going to go with that one. I'm going to start off. I give this one, this is the only 10 out of 10 I've given so far as my rating. It is 10 out of 10. Wow, perfect movie for you. I, get- I can watch it over and over again, and I did this week. It's really good. Furious Girl, what is your rating? Seven out of ten. Even though she was bored. 
She still likes the Winter Soldier as a villain. Yeah. Why would so. you think it's my number one <laughs> villain, buddy? Which I thought you would like the movie better, but that's fine. This is the, this shows you how hard it is to please this little girl. It is hard to please her. Please this house. Uh, my rating is nine point five. Bam! Red nice stars. Red Wait, stars. Are, are we like? Bam! Are we like throwing stars? So I can throw on it shorter. Hold on. Anyway, now we're up to Lady Disdain. <sighs> She's going to have to bring us up or lower us down on our averages. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Red stars upon stars. <laughs> <laughs> what, what knocked it down that 0. 0.5 from a perfect score? If anything. I don't know. I mean, I really like it as an overall movie. Um, I think it's almost perfect. I don't know if I have a tangible anything that, that makes me take the 0. 0.5 off, but... Um, Maybe I would have really liked to have seen that councilwoman actually be the councilwoman kicking booty instead of Natasha. That's a fair point five. Eh, it was good. It's good all around. I don't know that it's my. Fa- it's not my favorite one. My favorite uh, Marvel movie. I know it's yours. So yeah, nine point five out of ten. It's still an incredibly good movie. It's it's worthy of a very high score. Half hour yeah. screen time. Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft. I don't know. Not- He's gonna go play Minecraft right now. So it's no. gonna be Minecraft. So Captain America: Winter Soldier. I'm going to talk about some box office numbers here. Bring it. We give it to the kids because this is kind of boring for them, but we talk about it as far as popularity, likelihood of other ones, and what it kind of was doing. So only four years ago, so adjusted for inflation, you know, it made $95 million in the opening weekend. Nice. So it was the most ever adjusted for inflation. It's not quite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Adjusted for inflation. Which, which you can look at. There's like ways to look at that one. It's still gone with the wind most money ever adjusted for inflation because the amount of ticket sales were 25 cents each. Mm-hmm. So in uh, perspective, Black Panther has just recently come out and that made $200 million mm-hmm. in, in opening weekend. weekend. So mm-hmm. it doubled it. Yeah. But $95 million, not nothing. No, it it's made, very good. Right. Obviously it was highly, it was anticipated. True there. It made $715 million worldwide. Is that just first weekend or overall? That was overall. No, okay. overall. Overall, in the United States, usually about a 90-day run. It's mm-hmm. what they kind of do for, uh, you know, movies. So it's in for three months, um, and then it comes to video. Yeah. Usually. How it works. Uh, $260 million, and then uh, $450 million foreign. So it did well overseas. Yeah. And he's like, it's Captain America. How would it do? Why would it do well overseas? I'm like, well, it has universal themes of the small guy against governments. Mm-hmm. Almost everybody who pays yeah. movies wants to see this. And it wasn't America-centric. It was bringing down America from the inside. And, you know, uh, foreign countries probably would like to see that, actually. Sure, so yeah. <laughs> maybe a little bit of a hopeful movie for some of the countries. Also, it had some very nice-looking characters in it. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was the every time... Black Widow is in a movie. There is a gratuitous from behind shot. There's also uh, Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan. And, uh, yeah, they're right. very nice looking. And also, what's the guy's name? Mackie? Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie is also very nice looking. I'm just saying. But he's so, not shirtless. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter. Does not matter. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't matter. But, yeah, I mean, that's right now we're at $715 million box office for Captain America. It made money. It made a lot of money. Obviously, it did not make Civil War money. Um, Captain America Civil War went on to make $1.2 billion. So almost double unit of what this one would make. Uh, Bigger movie, a lot more characters. It was basically the Avengers sequel that we wanted Age of Ultron to be. But uh, hmm. Captain America centric. It just didn't have Thor and Hulk in it. Yeah. And really, a real villain. I didn't have Thanos. It didn't have Ultron. It didn't have Loki. It didn't have like this major villain going against him. It had a disgruntled guy. We're going to talk about that one when that comes up. Well, and also this. So this movie, in addition to what you were just talking about, had the far-reaching effect that it brought Shield down. Um, and again. We're watching, you know, the, I've seen this these already, but the kids are working through it, watching the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which they they encompass far more of the consequences and fallout of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming down in that series. So obviously it goes beyond just the Marvel movies, but right. that was a major, that was a major happening where S.H.I.E.L.D. came down. And the fact that Black Widow unleashes all the data 
which catalyzes at least one story plot going forward about why now all this information is out there. What does that lead to? Um, it definitely has consequences. It wasn't just like, hey, we'll let the internet see all the things we've done, we've done and no big deal. Right. Yeah. So I, I, it's, I think it's appropriate that this was possibly even over Age of Ultron that because it because it signified such a major shift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, I was talking about Civil War being better than Age of Ultron. Right, I'm talking but about. But this one definitely this is higher on my list. It changed everything. It changed the world. It changed the MCU world, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I don't watch television like we were talking about earlier, but they did tie it in. So that week's episode, the week after it premiered, yeah. Hydra had fall, uh, t- uh, Shield had fallen. Yeah, it's a big deal on Agents of Shield. <laughs> the next movie we're going to talk about coming up. Yeah, we're going to watch is Guardians of the Galaxy. Yay! That one actually might be my top. I mean, I like Incredible (laughs) Hulk, but I, I, I have so much love for Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the soundtrack. I guarantee that's why you like it. We need, but I think one of the kids might like Chris Pratt naked. Well, because, you know, if you're going to go through the MCU uh, body shaping transformation, Mm -hmm. you know, it happened to Hugh Jackman. Yep. It happened to Chris Pratt. Yep. Chris Evans. Yep. Chris Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. Even though he's yeah. shirt off. Well, you can but tell he does from, he does in the first one, but he has a you know a big giant hole in his. No, you, know, you can tell he's he evol- his body evolves from like right. the first Iron Man to the next ones. So I think Mark Ruffalo has the best one. He's like, oh, my muscles are CG. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> right. He's like, whatever. <laughs> no, it's totally, it's totally true. Right. So we're right smack in the middle of Phase Two yes. of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Iron Man Three starting off Phase Two, Thor: Dark World, which we both, after we watched it again, having listened to people malign it, not really think about it, really enjoyed it more. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't age. It's not a horrible movie. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy is next. A- Avengers: Age of Ultron is after that. And then Ant Man, which nice. might be one of your least favorite movies, you say? Yeah, it's I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it, it's not like up there. Like, woo! I need to watch it all the time. I, I appreciate it. I love Paul Rudd too. So you know, true. That's coming up, coming forward. Looking forward to. Uh, we just saw Black Panther, Avengers: Infinity War, Avengers Three. Yes, man. Right. We're gonna be busy. That's May 4th. <laughs> Oof. Better hustle. That's going to be crazy. Then after that, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's right. So, uh, being a woman, I want to kind of maybe kind of throw this out there now. Yeah. How do you feel about Ant-Man not being your favorite character in your favorite movies, being the sequel to that, having the first woman in the title of an MCU movie? Wow. Is that true? The first woman in and the, and the wasp. The wasp. She's is woman the first what in the title. Um, can I say about damn time? Uh, <laughs> that a I'm a little. I'm kind of horrified that that's the first time in this whole thing that that's happened. I mean, I know Guardians kind of encompasses all the Guardians, but yeah, uh, I would say about damn time. Um, her whole mentality toward you know her dad is a lot of bitterness not just about her mom but saying i want my moment i'm ready i'm trained why aren't you letting me and he does this whole protectionist thing which you know you get as a dad towards his daughter but she's like look let me go so i'm excited to see her being let go and giving given her own uh, superhero costume which by the way has blasters and wings <laughs> the trailer uh, drops recently for that one tells you what the time of the world we we're recording these and it had a giant pez dispenser yeah oh, and George and hello, love kitty. That. hello kitty we, love, we have hello kitty everywhere in our house because of her her girl. room is painted in hello kitty colors oh, so it's I'm not one of your favorite movies i forgive you there i couldn't remember either because it was yeah. out of left field and i was like whoa wait but i do prepared. like baskin and robbins and they there's a baskin robbins always finds out yeah, they always find out all right thank you for listening to unpause it yes thank you for abiding with the dad abides and so on Follow Unposit on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, or visit us online at unposit.com.